Hi everyone, I'm Lab Roy Chong from National Center for Research on Earthquake Engineering and from Departments of Civil Engineering, National Taiwan University and National Chenggong University. This is my name in Chinese, Zhong Li Lai. Welcome to the course Introduction to Seismic Design of Structures. This is Lecture 5-1. Fourth vibration of single degree of freedom structure one. Single degree of freedom structure is a structure which displacement can be described by only one single variable. And this is a structure with damping. Fourth vibration of structure is the vibration induced by external forces. In this lecture, we will focus on external forces that can be described by simple functions such as step functions, impulse function, and sinusoidal function. Here are some terminology. Single degree of freedom is a system where the displacement can be described by only one single variable. In Chinese, dan zi you do. Damp structure is a structure with damping. In Chinese, Ju Zhu Li. Fourth vibration is the vibration due to external forces. In Chinese, Chang Po Zhen Dong. Inertial force is a force that is directly proportional to the absolute acceleration of the structure. In Chinese, Guan Xing Li. Restoring force is the force directly proportional to displacement. In Chinese, Hui Fu Li. Damping force is the force directly proportional to velocity in Chinese Zhu Li Li. External force is the force applied to the structure in Chinese Wai Li. Unit step response is the structural response due to unit step function in Chinese Dan Wei Bu Jie Fan Ying. Unit impulse response is the response of the structure due to unit impulse force, in Chinese, Dan Wei Mai Chong Fan Ying. Unit sinusoidal response is the response of the structure due to unit sinusoidal forces. Transient response, in Chinese, Zhan Tai Fan Ying, is the response of the structure exists at the beginning and it disappears with time. Steady state response in Chinese Wen Tai Fan Ying is the response of the structure exists forever. You will not decay, decay, you will not disappear with time. A single degree of freedom structure can be modeled as mass here, spring and damper system. And F T is the external forces apply to the structure. And here's the free body diagram of a single degree of freedom under external forces. Ft is the external force, Fdt is the damping force, which is directly proportional to the velocity of the structure. And Fs is the restoring force, which is directly proportional to the displacement of the structure. According to Newton's law, Ma equal to the resultant force. Resulting force equal to Ft minus Kxt because the restoring force is pointing to the left. Minus Cx dot T because the damping force is pointing to the left. And At is the acceleration of the structure. It can be expressed as the second derivative of displacement. Therefore, we have Mx double dot equal to Ft minus Kxt minus cx dot t. If we move minus kxt to the left hand side of the equation, we have plus kxt. And move this minus cx dot t to the left hand side of the equation, we have plus cx dot t. And after rearrangement, we have the motion equation equal to mx double dot plus cx dot plus kxt equal to ft. This is a second order ordinary differential equation and is non-homogeneous because of the existence of the forcing function. 
and uh, the coefficients are constant. M, C, K are constant because uh, they do not vary with time. And uh, from engineering math mathematics, ordinary differential equation is second order because of the second derivative here. And uh, it's a non-homogeneous because of the forcing function here. It's a ODE with constant coefficients because M, C, K are constants. M is the mass of the structure. C is the damping coefficient of the structure. And K is the stiffness of the structure. And initial force Mx double dot is proportional to the acceleration of the structure. Damping force equal to Cx dot is proportional to the velocity of the structure. Restoring force equal to Kxt is proportional to the displacement of the structure. External force is the force applied to the structure. And uh, we'll consider a uh, unit step response. Before finding out the unit step response, we have to consider the unit step function first. Ut, when t is negative, that is t less than zero, ut equal to zero. When t is positive, ut equal to one. And there's a jump here, and the height of the jump is one step. Therefore, it's called unit step function. If the external force is assigned to be the unit step function, then we can have the equation of motion, something like that. Mx double dot plus Cx dot equal plus Kxt equal to F, F equal to Ut. If we are interested in the term larger than zero, therefore Ut is a constant equal to one. And with two initial conditions, one is initial displacement, x of zero equal to zero, one is unit uh, initial velocity, x dot of zero equal to zero. Because of non-homogeneous ordinary differential equation, we have the general solution composed of two parts. One is the homogeneous solution. In order to find out the homogeneous solution, we assign the fun forcing function equal to zero. Therefore, we have mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx equal to zero. And if we divide the, the motion equation by m, then we have x double dot plus 2 zeta omega 0 x star plus omega 0 square x equal to 0. And omega 0 is the natural frequency of the structure, and zeta is the damping ratio of the structure. And omega d here is the damp natural frequency of the structure. Omega d equal to omega 0 times square root of 1 minus zeta square. From the previous lecture, we have already found out the homogeneous solution. Xht equal to exponential minus zeta omega zero t times c1 cosine omega dt plus c2 sine omega dt. So far we have found out the homogeneous solution and we have to, we have to continue to find out the particular solution. Because the forcing function here equal to 1 is a constant so that we can use the method of undetermined coefficient because the forcing function is a constant. Therefore, xpt equal to a. a is a constant coefficient. And from xpt, we find out the first derivative, xp dot t equal to zero, and the second derivative, xp double dot equal to zero. Then we sub substitute xpt into the motion equation and xp dot t into the motion equation and xp double dot t into the motion equation. And from the equality of the motion equation, we have m0, m times 0 plus c times 0 plus k a equal to 1. And from this equation, we can solve for a, the undetermined coefficient, equal to 1 divided by k. Once a is solved, we substitute back to the particular solution. Then we can find out the xpt, the particular solution, equal to 1 divided by k. With the homogeneous solution, xh, and the particular solution, we combine these two together, we can have the general solution. x equal to exponential minus zeta omega zero t times c1 cosine omega dt plus 
C2 sine omega dt plus 1 divided by k and C1, C2 here are two coefficients of integration. And from the initial condition, displacement equal to zero, initial velocity equal to zero. Then we can solve for the, the coefficient, the two coefficients of integration, C1 and C2. Right now we have the displacement and take the first derivative, we can find out the velocity and from the initial velocity, x of 0 equal to 0. Therefore, c1 times cosine 0 equal to 1 plus c2 times psi 0 equal to 0 plus 1 divided by k and exponential 0 equal to 1. Then we can solve for c1 equal to minus 1 divided by k. And from the initial velocity, x dot of 0 equal to 0 and exponential 0 equal to 1 then minus om zeta omega d omega 0 cosine 0 equal to 1 and the cosine 0 equal to 1 we have c2 times omega d times 1 equal to 0 because we have already solved for c1 and from this equality we can have c2 equal to minus zeta omega 0 divided by k omega 0 and omega d once we have solved for C1 and C2, then we substitute C1 and C2, these two coefficients, into the general solution. Then we can have the structural displacement equal to xt equal to 1 divided by k times 1 minus exponential minus zeta omega 0 t times cosine omega dt plus zeta omega 0 divided by omega d times psi omega dt. From the structural displacement, if we assign t equal to 0, then we have xt equal to 1 divided by k, 1 minus exponential 0 equal to 1, cosine 0 equal to 1, 1 minus 1 equal to 0. Therefore, the solution satisfies the initial displacement. And when t tends to infinity, and this term vanishes, because uh, exponential minus infinity equal to zero. Therefore, equal to one divided by k times one minus zero equal to one divided by k. And this is the static displacement of the structure. If the force is applied very slowly, it will not induce velocity, it will not induce acceleration. Therefore, we have kx equal to one. Then we can solve for x equal to 1 divided by k and 1 divided by k is the static displacement of the structure and from the structural displacement because exponential minus zeta omega 0 t always less than 1 therefore it ranges from uh, minus 1 to 1 therefore xt the absolute value of xt of the displacement lies between 0 and 2 divided by k. Therefore, the structure vibrates about 1 divided by k, about the static displacement. At the frequency omega d, omega d is the damn natural frequency of, of the structure. And as time goes by, the displacement converges to 1 divided by k. Because uh, when t tends to 0, it uh, tends to infinity, and xt tends to 1 divided by k. Now we move to unit impulse response. Before considering unit impulse response, we have to consider unit impulse function first. And delta t, when t is non-zero, delta t, unit impulse function equal to zero. When t equal to zero, the delta t, the unit impulse function, tends to infinity. And the area under this function is the sub integration from minus infinity to infinity, delta t dt equal to 1. Then there's the area under this function equal to 1. Because when t is non-zero, delta t equal to 0. Therefore, we can reduce the limit of integration from minus infinity to infinity to the range from 0 negative 
to zero positive. Therefore, we have integration zero negative from zero negative to zero positive delta t dt equal to one. If we assign the external force F t equal to delta t, then we have the equation of motion mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx t equal to F t and F t is assigned to be delta t and with two initial conditions initial displacement equal to zero initial velocity equal to zero. Since delta t tends to infinity when t equal to zero therefore we cannot solve this equation directly we have to integrate it. Before integration we just consider the displacement and the velocity when t is very close to zero. Because of for this case for displacement it always takes time to have displacement. Therefore when t is a little bit less than zero or a little bit larger than zero, x t is a constant equal to zero. Equal to x of zero equal to zero. Because there no force when t is less than zero, therefore there will not there will be no change in, ve in velocity. Therefore x star of zero minus equal to x star of zero equal to zero. Then if we integrate the equation of motion from zero minus to zero plus, we consider the, the term on the right hand side of the equation first. The integration from zero minus to zero plus delta t dt equal to 1 according to the definition of unit impulse function. And xt, the integration here, the term here, because uh, xt, when t is in the range of 0 minus to 0 positive, xt is a constant, and xt equal to 0. Because xt equal to 0, the integration here vanishes, therefore k times 0. And x dot t, after integration, the dis velocity becomes displacement. And x zero positive and x zero negative are very close to x of zero. Therefore, it's a constant equal to zero, and this term also disappears. And we consider the first term, first term on the left-hand side of the equation. After integration, x double dot becomes the velocity. You go to x dot of 0 plus minus x star of 0 negative because there is no force when t is less than 0 therefore there is no change in velocity so that we have x star of 0 negative equal to x star of 0 equal to 0 therefore x star of 0 negative vanishes only x star of 0 positive left so that we have m times x star of x0 positive plus c times 0 plus k times 0 equal to 1. So that we can solve the velocity of 0 positive equal to 1 divided by m. So far we have x of 0 positive equal to x of 0 equal to 0 and x dot of 0 positive equal to 1 divided by m from the previous line. If we are only interested in the term t larger than 0, because when t is larger than 0, delta t equal to 0. Therefore, it becomes a free vibration problem with two initial conditions x of 0 positive equal to 0, x dot of 0 positive equal to 1 divided by m. Because this is a free vibration problem, we have already solved the free vibration problem from the previous lecture. From the previous lecture, we can solve this equation very easily. So that we have xt equal to exponential minus zeta omega zero t times x zero dot divided by omega d times psi omega dt and x zero dot equal to one divided by m so that we can have exponential minus zeta omega zero t times one divided by m omega d 
times sine omega dt, and omega d is the damn natural frequency of the structure. Therefore, the displacement from unit impulse response is vibrates at the frequency omega d, and uh, when t tends to infinity, and this term vanishes. So that we can have the unit impulse displacement response, something like that. And if t equal to zero, sine zero equal to zero. Therefore, x of zero equal to zero. It satisfies the initial displacement. When t tends to infinity, exponential minus infinity equal to zero. Therefore, xt tends to zero. Therefore, the displacement vibrates at frequency omega d. Omega d is the damn natural frequency of the structure, and it converges to zero. As time goes by, the displacement disappears. And because exponential minus zeta omega zero t always less than one, therefore the amplitude of the vibration always less than one divided by m omega d. Therefore, the absolute value of the displacement always less than 1 divided by m omega d. Now we consider the relationship between unit step function and unit impulse function. And here is unit step function. And here is unit impulse function. For unit step function, when t is less than 0, when t is negative, ut equal to 0. When t is positive, ut equal to 1. For unit impulse function, delta t equal to 0 when t is non-zero, and delta t tends to infinity when t equal to 0. And the area under this function equal to 1. Therefore, it's called unit impulse function. Now we differentiate ut with t. When t is negative, because it's a constant, the differentiation equal to zero. When t is positive, because it's a constant, the differentiation equal to zero. When t equal to zero, because there's a jump here, the differentiation, the slope, equal to tends to infinity. Therefore, the differ differentiation of unit state function with respect to t equal to unit impulse function. Therefore, unit step function and unit impulse function are derivative to each other. Then we consider unit step response, something like that here. And we have already got the unit impulse response. If we differentiate the unit step response with respect to t, so that we can carry out the differentiation, finally, we can we come up with this result. And if we compare this with, compare these two results, we find out that the differentiation of unit step response equal to the unit impulse response. So that we can conclude that if the differentiation of the unit step function equal to the unit impulse function, then we can have the differentiation of unit step response equal to the unit impulse response. Therefore, once the forcing function are derivative to each other, the response are also derivative to each other. Now we move to unit sinusoidal response. We consider unit sinusoidal, fun sinusoidal function first, psi omega t, omega is the frequency of the excitation. If we assign the external force equal to psi omega t, then the equation of motion can be written in this form. mx double down plus cx star plus kxt equal to psi omega t. And with two initial conditions, initial displacement equal to zero, initial velocity equal to zero. And omega is the excitation frequency of the structure. 
since uh, this equation of motion is a non-homogeneous ordinary differential equation, therefore the general solution consists of two parts. One part is a homogeneous solution. In order to find out the homogeneous solution, we assign the forcing function equal to zero. Then from the previous lecture, we got the homogeneous solution xh equal to exponential minus zeta omega zero t times c1 cosine omega dt plus c2 sine omega dt. And omega d equal to omega zero times square root of one minus zeta square. And it is the damn natural frequency of the, stu of the structure. Once we have the homogeneous solution, we are going to find out the particular solution. Because the forcing function is psi omega t, and uh, it is not part of the homogeneous solution. Therefore, we can use the mass of undetermined coefficient and assign xpt equal to a cosine omega t plus b psi omega t. a and b are two undetermined coefficients, and they can be determined by the ordinary differential equation. Therefore, we take the first derivative, xp dot, equal to minus a omega psi omega t plus b omega cosine omega t, and the second derivative, xp double dot, equal to minus a omega square cosine omega t minus b omega square psi omega t. If we substitute xp t into the differential equation, xp dot t into the differential equation, and xp double dot t into the differential equation, then we can solve the two undetermined coefficients a and b. Okay, we substitute xp t here, xp dot t here, and xp double dot t here, and we have this equality. If we group the terms for cosine omega dt and the term psi omega dt, omega t, because cosine omega t and psi omega t are two independent functions. Therefore, this equality is satisfied as long as the coefficient on the left-hand side of the equation for cosine omega t equal to that on the right-hand side of the equation, so that we can have this equation and the coefficient of for psi omega t on the left-hand side of the equation equal to the coefficient on the right-hand side of the equation so that we can have the second equation. And these two are simultaneous equations with two unknowns, with two simultaneous equations with two unknowns so that we can solve for a and b. And a equal to minus two zeta omega zero omega divided by m omega zero square minus omega square o square plus four zeta square omega zero square omega square and b equal to omega zero square minus omega square divided by m times omega zero square minus omega square square plus four zeta square omega zero square omega square once we have solved for a and b we substitute a and b back to the particular solution so that we can have the particular solution xpt. Once we have the homogeneous solution and the particular solution and we combine these two together, we can have the general solution something like that. Therefore, the general solution x equal to xx plus xp. And x is the displacement of the structure and we take the first derivative, we have x star is the velocity of the structure. And c1, c2 are two coefficients of integration. And uh, with the uh, initial displacement and the initial velocity, we can solve for the coefficient c1 and c2. Initial displacement equal to zero. x of zero equal to zero. So that we have c1 times cosine zero equal to one, plus c2 times psi zero equal to zero, and plus cosine zero equal to one, psi zero equal to zero. 
so that we can solve for C1 equal to 2 times zeta omega zero omega divided by m times omega zero square minus omega square and square again plus 4 zeta square omega zero square omega square and from the initial velocity x dot of zero equal to zero so that we have exponential zero equal to one and size zero equal to zero and cosine zero equal to one so that we have minus c1 zeta omega zero plus c2 times cosine zero equal to one so that c2 we have c2 times omega d and sine zero equal to zero cosine zero equal to one and so that we have this term and from this term c1 has already been solved therefore the only unknown is c2 so that we can have c2 equal to something like that once we have the two coefficient of integration c1 and c2 we substitute c1 and c2 back to the displacement then we can solve for the displacement and we can su substitute c1 and c2 back to the velocity so that we can have the structural velocity and here's the structural displacement and uh, if we have a close look to the structural displacement here's cosine omega dt psi omega dt so that the displacement vibrates at the frequency omega d and omega d is the damn natural frequency of the structure and here cosine omega t and psi omega t omega is the excitation frequency therefore the structural displacement vibrates at two co two frequencies one is omega d damn natural frequency of the structure the other is omega omega is excitation fre excitation frequency and if we have the close look on the first term here is exponential minus omega t and when t tends to infinity this term disappear tends to zero therefore the vibration at the damn natural frequency of the structure dis disappear with time and if we look at the second term and this is cosine omega t sine omega t and the amplitude here do not does not vary with time therefore this term exists forever okay if we consider the first term because the first term disappear as time tends to infinity therefore we call this term as a transient response transient, transient response does exist at the beginning of the time and disappear, and disappear with time therefore we call it transient response xt t and when t tends to infinity because exponential minus zeta omega zero t tends to zero therefore the transient tends to zero therefore for this transient response you vibrate at frequency omega d omega d is the damn natural frequency of the structure and it converges to zero as t tends to zero therefore transient responses disappear with time and then we consider the second term and the second term is called steady state response because the amplitude of this response do not change with time does not change with time therefore the steady state vibrates as frequency omega and omega is the excitation frequency and with amplitude 1 divided by m square root of omega zero square minus omega square square again plus 4 zeta square omega zero square omega square and how do we find the amplitude we take this the square and then the sum of this coefficient the sum of the square of this coefficient so that we can have this the amplitude here when omega tends to omega zero this term disappear the amplitude tends to 1 divided by 2 zeta m 
omega zero square. When zeta equal tends to zero, therefore no, no, there's no damping for the structure, and the amplitude becomes infinity due to resonance. This is a phenomenon of resonance. And here's the refer references for uh, this lecture. The first one is Seismic Design Code of Buildings. It's published in uh, 2011 by the Ministry of Interior. And it is written in Chinese. You can download the, the publication from this website. The second reference is a Structural Concrete Design Code published in 2011, also by the Ministry of Interior. And it is written in Chinese. You can download from this website. And this is the video for the lecture one, and this one in English, this one in Chinese, and lecture one dash one is the videos on strategy for prevention of earthquake disaster. And video for lecture one dash two on uh, earthquake engineering and seismic design, this is the English version, and there's no Chinese version. And this is the video for lecture two, and this is the video for lecture 3 and the video for lecture 4. And the video for lecture 5 is under construction. This is the current one, the fourth vibration of single degree of freedom structure 1. And the English version and Chinese version will be provided later. And uh, in this lecture, we have discussed the fourth vibration of single degree of freedom structure it's a single degree freedom structure, and it's also a dam structure. And uh, under unit step, fun unit step force, we have already solved for unit step response. And we have already solved for unit impulse response under unit impulse force. And we have also solved for unit sinusoidal response under unit sinusoidal force. That's all for this lecture. Thank you. See you again. Bye-bye.